Perched atop Mornstead's rocky vista, the impregnable fortress complex of the hallowed sentinels judges mortal souls that scurry below. A solitary spire extends heavenward and acts as a lighthouse, warning those who approach sin against immoral pursuits. Agonized wails and the tortured ravings of those driven mad emanate from the Tower of Penance, cast the mountain in an eerie gloom. Within this horrifying prison, heretics, apostates, dissenters, enemies of the sentinels are condemned to intolerable misery, faced with torment to extricate their soul's deepest transgressions. A man, himself tormented by impure thoughts and dark desires, mercilessly abuses his prisoners to mollify the demon lurking inside. The master of castigations purges heresy from others to compensate for his own wickedness, to silence a voice within that screams for evil. This is the story of Tancred, knight castigator of the hallowed sentinels, and his horrid brother Reinhold. A tale of self-deception, of control, and inevitable descent into base desire. Let's dive in. Years ago, before a deer the demon god stirred from his prison, a child was born in the Oathlands beyond Bornstead. This child, marked from birth by rare distinction, was not one but indeed two separate souls that dwelt within the same body. Tancred and his brother Reinhold were twins conjoined to one flesh, spirits twisted and lashed together. Whether these infants were created from a dark curse, born from magical influence by their parents, or merely an eventuality of nature is not quite clear, nor is the extent to which the body displayed distinct, doubled body segments. Likely, the bizarre mutation was limited to a spare, vestigial face occupying the back of the twin's head, while the rest of the shared body was no different than other children. Nonetheless, the brothers were likely orphaned by horrified parents, unable to tolerate abomination and grew from an early age accustomed to harrowing street life. Like most siblings, Tancred and Reinhold rarely saw eye to eye. Their dispositions drove stark contrasts in personality. Tancred assumed the role of an innocent, devout follower of faith plagued by an internal demon who wished nothing more than to corrupt his soul. Reinhold indulged Tancred's fantasy became a voice of wickedness that whispered twisted perversions in his brother's ear. Reinhold sought always to revel in debauchery, to be self-reliant and selfish, acquiring through violence or intimidation what he desired, while Tancred sought always to mitigate these savage desires. He bore the guilt of Reinhold's sin. Again, like most siblings, these vastly different worldviews bred rivalry and argument that often devolved into quarrels. But how can two identities that share one body fight against each other? The twins' battle isn't a physical brawl, but rather a contest of control, of domination through will. Reinhold's dark urges seethe within their body, but Tancred's persona, bolstered by his faith, proved mighty. He assumed dominant control of their shared flesh and banished Reinhold to occupy the vestigial face hidden on Tancred's backside. But always Reinhold is there, struggling against chains, urging his brother to commit great evils. Infrequently, he gains the dominant presence and conducts sinister acts of violence. Such aggressive urges bubble to the surface during a defining moment in the siblings' lives. Now young adults, Tancred and Reinhold often scrounge the cobbled streets of their village in search of food to steal, trinkets to thieve, as want and poverty make criminals of them. A troop of circus performers arrives to entertain the gathered public. Reinhold seizes the opportunity and snatches items from shopkeepers and festival goers whose attention is otherwise distracted by the display in front of them. Grayson, a performer of inimitable skill within the troupe spies young Tancred's transgression and confronts him in an alleyway following their show. Unfortunately for Grayson, he's stopped not Tancred, but Reinhold. In command of their shared body, Reinhold unleashes a salvo of brutal punches, lashes out in a fury of blind and inhuman glee, and nearly kills the performer. 
This we hear in the item description of Grayson's ring. Grayson's skills as a traveling carnival performer included knife throwing, juggling, and serpent handling, at least until he caught the young Tancred and Reinhold stealing from the troop. Grayson was bludgeoned into a coma from which he never emerged, while the conjoined twins fled into the night. Consciousness and control return to Tancred, who wallows in astonishment as he looks upon what his own hands have wrought. Unable to cope with the seething animosity that roils within his brother, and confused as to whether these episodes are born of his own soul's wickedness, Tancred flees into the wilds beyond their village. Existential dread swells. The dark blanket of despair suffocates Tancred. Here, in the mind's darkest abyss, illumination casts its brilliant rays. A holy vision, perhaps that of the radiant Father Aureus himself, creator of all good, descends to settle Tancred's mind, allay his fears, and charge him with profound duty. Support for this event is given in the hidden lore of Tancred's man-catcher. It reads, Following a brutal beating, the young Tancred claimed to have received the Holy Vision, instructing him to travel to Mornstead and serve Judge Cleric. Reinhold received no such vision and declared his brother a deluded fool, but was unable to prevent Tancred pursuing his newfound faith and purpose. The first chapter of the twins' life closes with Tancred in firm control of their body and a self-styled guardian of the faith on the road to Mornstead. The brilliant path of redemption and atonement shines bright before him. But Reinhold's persona remains, and he works with a cunning industry to undermine his self-righteous brother. Tancred is quick to impress the hallowed sentinels, though theirs is an order of divine radiance that preaches unity, peace, and salvation through acts of charity. They are not without enemies both external and internal. The sentinels must remain ever vigilant to transgressions that tarnish their order's reputation, to disingenuous and duplicitous behavior. Casting light upon such dark deeds requires methods that are likewise, and the young tankard's knowledge of pain, his willingness to inflict brutality, earns him the role of a castigator within the sentinels. Castigators are brothers and sisters responsible for reprimanding wayward souls, for criticizing deviants and admonishing sinners. Their purpose, to extract heresy and punish disobedience of those who have turned their back to Aureus' light. Castigators are often the most zealous of holy warriors and their devotion is mirrored in their grim work. Harboring nothing but seething contempt for the reprehensibly guilty souls sentenced, the castigators conduct beatings, hangings, mutilations, and all tortures imaginable, using an endless array of gruesome devices from within the Tower of Penance. The dungeon is adorned with such nightmares contraptions. Among this order, Tancred appeases Reinhold's truculence, while he projects onto the prisoners his own sin, the guilt he feels, and the deranged brother living within. Tancred wishes to cleanse his own soul of perfidy through the blood of penitence. If these heretics can be redeemed, there is hope too for Tancred, so long as villainous Reinhold is held in abeyance. Tancred displays brilliant promise within the castigators. His passion for truth and righteousness is comparable to Judge Cleric's, and he leads many sinners to repent. This promise, however, is tinged red, and the man develops an unsettling reputation for barbaric practices. Rumors of agonizing pain, ungodly torture, accompany the moans that escape from the Tower of Penance, the price paid to keep Reinhold satisfied. But this is nothing compared to the horror that is about to be unleashed. When the demon god Adir's Rogar corruption is released upon Mornstead, its bizarre and chaotic energies bombard the hallowed sentinels. Blight infects the body while hysteria grips the mind. Thus afflicted, Judge Cleric and her holy order substitute compassion for contempt, righteousness for wickedness. Their paranoia leads to callousness. As for Tancred, the Rogar blight shatters his mind and slowly corrodes the barriers within that prevent Reinhold from assuming control. 
He fears this infernal magic more than most, for a demon has already made home of his heart. The remembrance of Tancred and Reinhold, dropped upon their defeat, states, As the Rogar corruption which Tancred so desperately feared took root within the body he shared with Reinhold, so too did Creed blossom, agreed not for wealth, but for what he was gradually and dreadfully losing to his vengeful brother, Control. Indeed, Control slips from Tancred, and as the corruption transforms the Sentinels into zealous, callous monsters of their former selves, so too do Reinhold's base desires transform Tancred. Their delirium blinds Judge Cleric and the Hallowed Sentinels. They see sin everywhere that must be violently extricated. Ruthless Inquisition fills the Tower of Penance with myriad souls that, guilty or innocent, now face Tancred's torturous wrath, the brutality of which slinks to terrible lows stirred by Reinhold's insanity. You see it in their eyes, don't you? Be quiet! You can strut around in your grand armor with your imperious voice and your oh-so-unshakable faith. And you can maim and murder anyone, our little black heart desires. I said be quiet! Corruption is rooted out at all levels of society. Heretical Adir worship discovered in brothers and sisters. Even their holy order is rotten. A sect within turns deviant from Judge Cleric's rule. The Fidelis, a contingent of hallowed sentinels uncorrupted and untouched by Rogar energies, rally beneath the leadership of Knight Captain Stomond and charge themselves with restoring purity and order to their wayward companions. This is seen as heresy, however, by the stolid master of castigations, who brings judgment upon these blasphemers. Stoman's armor relates the terrible events that follow. Each hallowed sentinel who joined the Fidelis fully accepted that they were risking their life by doing so, but after Tancred learned of their existence and he and those loyal to him carried out their murderous purge, Stoman could not dispel the troubling notion that all of that Fidelis blood was on his hands. But the Fidelis aren't alone in feeling the twins' justice. Lamp bearers, the heretical dark crusaders that wield Umbral's unholy magic, are also sought and shackled. As this stigma found within the tower reveals, the lamp bearers Byron and Katrin are at some point imprisoned. Iron. Hmm? You passed out for a moment. Oh, sorry. That bastard Tancred got a bit carried away during our last chat, but as for what he's done to you that I'm gonna kill him. And indeed the castigator addresses the Deathless One as yet another sinner upon initiating their boss fight. Another sinner. As the brother immured now dominates their shared body, Tancred is forced to perform vile acts anathema to his beliefs as a hallowed sentinel, acts invoked in the demon god's glory. Now stained crimson, the beacon crumbles and weakens Adir's prison. Tancred is shocked by the sin perpetrated through his own hands. Symbolic of the twisted tower in which he resides, Tancred is imprisoned within his own corrupt body made to suffer unrelenting anguish in light of blasphemy. The Master of Castigation's state is truly deplorable when happened upon by the Lamp Bearer. The execution of hundreds of heretics unable to extinguish his own complicit guilt. I said be quiet! But you're only embarrassing yourself like some talentless child mummer. They don't respect you or fear you, no matter what you do to them. <laughs> they all see clearly through your pathetic facade to the powerless, hypocritical coward you truly are. Enough! Shh, sweet brother. <laughs> 
but untold horror lurks within, revealed in its entirety by his defeat. With Tancred's will exhausted, Reinhold exerts complete control over their shared body. He impales his brother and unleashes his own monstrous persona. Ravenous and savage, Reinhold attacks with bestial fury. Thus engaged, we are witness to Adir's Rogar influence, as the Emirid's strikes are wreathed in pyromantic inferno. The sad truth is that Tancred, so long in control, so long the righteous warrior, is no more. He cannot be redeemed, only blessed with the peace of eternal oblivion. The remembrance dropped upon the brother's defeat is a severed tongue, most likely their own, which is quite intriguing. The tongue is charged with deep symbolism across religions and cultures, subtly enlightening us to the felled boss's nature. It is a source of blessings and curses, able to shape emotion, guide action, create and destroy through word. The tongue's light and dark duality is manifest in the dual nature of Tancred and Reinhold. Tongues may also be offered in sacrificial rites to silence or condemn a vile enemy. Perhaps Tancred offers those of his prisoners to silence Reinhold's venomous words. The Master of Castigation's key, also dropped upon defeat, alludes to the twins' duality. A close scrutiny reveals the bloodstained key bears two faces that of Tancred and his murderous brother, Reinhold. The tale of Tancred and Reinhold is one of profound struggle, examining complex moral questions. Is a soul, strong in faith and pure in intent, able to quell the base desires and immoral urges that inhabit the dark recesses of the heart? Is a path of righteousness enough to atone for past sins? Can a life spent in pursuit of divine light cast out the encroaching gloom. In Tancred, we see a man trapped by grief who perpetrates atrocity to satisfy the nature of his darker demon. Unfortunately, Tancred will be remembered not by his holy charge, but by the ungodly sin manifested through Reinhold's actions. As with other hallowed sentinels, Tancred's legacy is one of corruption, of evil done by the manipulations of a spiteful, demonic god. His beacon colored crimson, his hands stained thusly, far is the master of castigations fallen. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on the story of Tancred, master of castigations. Let me know your thoughts of the twins and their blasphemy, as well as your own insights and suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the podcast where content is uploaded frequently. I want to thank my amazing supporters over on Patreon who make all of this possible, and I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, written scripts and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash the librarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.